Well, if you've been at Northville over the last several weeks, then you know that we have been in a study that we're calling the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, we're actually calling it Summer on the Mount, but it's based upon the Sermon on the Mount, which was one of the first and most famous sermons that Jesus ever gave. And this sermon for Jesus really will set the stage for what he's going to do over the next three years of his ministry. Every practical teaching that he does is kind of summarized and outlined in, in this sermon. It has been an incredible uh, study. It's uh, the sermon in its entirety is found in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, 6, and 7. But bits and pieces of that sermon are all throughout the books of Matthew, the books of Mark, Luke, and John as well. The first 16 verses kind of set up the introduction. Uh, 1 through 12 are the Beatitudes that we've already looked at. And then last the week, we looked at... Uh, uh, two metaphors that Jesus used in his kind of introduction for what he is going to say the church is to be in the world. And what we're going to do today is look at a real life example of that. So that is a little bit uh, uh, not typical. I don't know if you call that atypical, B typical, Z typical. I get confused in all those words, but it's going to be a little bit different today. And you're going to hear from several of us on what it is to be those two metaphors that we talked about. Does anybody remember what metaphors Jesus uses to describe kind of kingdom people to the world? Salt and light. Yeah, that's it. I love Eugene Peterson's translation of that verse uh, because he says that you were here to bring out the flavoring of God to the world. That if, if people could taste and see that the Lord is good, how would they do that? Well, he says it's by God's people being salt. And then he, he looks and he says, and, and the world really, because the sermon's a little bit about the shape of the world. He says, the world is in darkness and you were called to be a what to the world? <laughs> A light to the world is right. And you know, and we get that little kid's song that we sing, but it's really meant for us as adults as well. You're not just a light to the world. He says, hide it under a bushel. No, what are we going to do with that light? Let it shine. Well, uh, uh, that's really going to become the phrase of today's message, let it shine, because I think uh, uh, you helped do something this weekend that really was salt and light to our community. If people are going to taste the goodness of God, if they, people are going to see the light of God, it's going to be through God's people. And yesterday, again, we had an amazing example of that. You may have uh, heard it called uh, the free fuel day. Uh, you know, I think you guys are good all throughout each week of being salt and light through our community, through all the programs and the things that go on here. You're good at big days as well. You know, those big days where we have dental days and then we have where 54 people load up in vans and they go to other places and, and then they come back home and they develop programs to do that same thing right here in, in our town and you give thousands of dollars of food to tornado and hurricane victims and and then yesterday, um, uh, through a, a generous uh, a gift of $25,000, we were able, only able to use about fifteen to 16000 of that. But it was a free fuel day is what we called it. And it was really a blessing to be salt and light in this world. And today we wanted you to hear a little bit about that day. We're going to show a video that uh, doesn't have sound behind it, but it was a five-minute video. And uh, uh, as it's playing, I'm going to tell about it, but we're going to have some people who are going to talk to you as well come up on stage. And so as we're rolling this video, I'll talk. They'll come up on stage, and we will uh, hopefully uh, give you a taste of what happened yesterday in our community. So as you see that going down through there, it's going to last a, 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 about a minute. And we kind of talked to some people. Uh, what you didn't see, before that video started, there were already 65 cars in front of that in line. Where we cut off, there is another uh, over half of a mile of cars in the other direction lined up down Long Hollow Pike uh, from the place that we end. Some of these people just came out of their homes over there. That uh, particular gentleman, if you could hear, he had, a, he had a son who was hidden in the floorboard over there that wouldn't get up that I think is going to come to some of our services, uh, especially for uh, uh, Gigi's he was talking about. Um, uh, that couple there, uh, we actually met them at Mary's Restaurant uh, and um, uh, uh, just talked to them about food and stuff. That lady loved me because I told her she looked beautiful. And uh, she was like, she's like, come on in here, sugar, and I'm going to give you a hug. And I thought, I was, I was all over in that car with her. <laughs> and then we're, we're, I don't know if you could see, I mean, that was just my cell phone. And you can see that I'm not going to get any awards for being a photographer or, or a videographer in there. But where that ended, there was already, uh, there was a 0.7 of a mile, uh, so seven-tenths of a mile behind that area uh, as we got through there. One of the things that we wanted to let you know, and I think there are some uh, pictures 
that are going to be on the, the screen there. Uh, we had planned on maybe just advertising the morning of, and Channel 5 uh, News evidently picked up the story and ran it about 5 that morning. So uh, when we got there at 7 o'clock, there were already some cars in line. This is probably about, uh, I don't know, 8.30 or so. There are four lines of cars that you can see. They're right behind the, the station where we wore out on Long Hollow Pike. Uh, beside the, I think it's A&W Trader Park or right through there, we were right in front of there. And then the next screen, that shows you can, that Trader Park is behind the gas station and that's where those cars were lined up. The line there going around that Trader Park went all the way back to that tree line that you can see, went across the tree line all the way back up into the gas station. That was less than half of the line. The rest of the line is the next shot went 0 .6, mile, 0 0.6 miles, or six tenths of a mile, all the way down Long Hollow Pike to where uh, we were having to walk down the middle of the road. And if you were there for gas, you lined up in the regular lane. If you were there for no gas, you got in the turning lane and they would let you come all the way up. Uh, the police department from Gallatin, we had our own, we had some Sumner County officers who were there. Uh, we had uh, uh, two police officers that showed up from Gallatin because they got so many calls that, what has happened on Long Hollow Pike? What has happened on Long Hollow Pike? And they came and they found out that Northfield happened on Long Hollow Pike. That's what was going on on Long Hollow Pike. And uh, so they were trying to help us figure out how to get traffic off the road back there. And so we ended up using a turning lane. One of the things I loved is that one of the officers uh, from uh, Gallatin, that that was his district, he started going to Pelican Snow Cone because we had those there for free. He started going there. He was taking them to cars. Every one of those cars uh, that I saw, they knew him. He came back and he said, these people are people in this community. I know every one of them. This is my district. He said, and they needed what you guys were doing today. And he was just overwhelmed. And, and then his boss had to come and say, now, how can we get the traffic off Galter Road? And I said, like, I, like, I don't know. That's your job. Like, I got it. <laughs> I got him here this morning, like, you know, but uh, uh, anyway, it was, it was an incredible, incredible, incredible morning. Uh, Scott Matheny and Frank Warosh, we didn't even have the officers come until 10 o'clock. By 9 o'clock that morning, there were already over 200 cars in line, and the line already stretched out onto Galton Road, so we figured out we had to go ahead and start. So 9.15, 9.20, we took off with, with the people that we had there, sending them through line. Uh, it just wrapped around forever. I think I've got a picture up there of Robin Hood and then of, uh, uh, yeah, there's Randy, Greg, and uh, John Pascarello up there. Uh, they were part of that team early that morning before we started letting people up by the pumps. But we had people pumping gas, washing windshields, uh, handing out um, uh, items like diapers and wipes and things like that. Water and Gatorade became particularly important. I think all of us sweated so much that if you had licked us, it would have been like licking salt. I mean, that's what <laughs> it was like. Not that we want you to come up and do that, but that's kind of... That's kind of what it was like. One of our sweet volunteers, Tammy, uh, I think is watching from home. She spent the evening in the emergency room. She got so uh, just overcome with heat. Uh, Randy Bailey did an entire job getting the parking done in what was uh, for a while really a, a stressful situation. And, uh, uh, but that happened because you guys are generous. And uh, we didn't even get through all the funds we had. We had $25,000. We only got to about 15, 16, right through there. Uh, so uh, we're going to do something with the rest. We've already had offers this morning to buy, to buy gas at no cost, like from wholesalers to bring trucks here on our parking lot and do it. So I don't know where this is going to go, but uh, 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 it's kind of exciting to hear what happened just after one service. So I'm going to start with the news story that Channel 5 ran last night, and then at the end of it, you'll see a girl who showed up. Uh, that was filmed. Uh, their stuff was professional. Our stuff was a, a, was a little... Uh, uh, what do you call cell it? Phone. Cell phone. Yeah, those things. <laughs> Little cell phones. So <laughs> it's not as professional in there, and, but Lindsay met this young lady, so she's going to tell you about it after it plays. Hundreds of people cashed in on an opportunity to fill up their cars for free in Gallatin. The Northfield Church gave away 6,000 gallons of gasoline this morning. Pastor Tom Haddon says they just wanted to bless the community in a practical way. Volunteers helped dispense more than $25,000 worth of gas. They also gave away free baby supplies like diapers and wipes to families in need. Just yesterday I had spoke to somebody and they told me I needed to find a church family. That that's what's missing in my life is a church family. I told them I don't even know where to begin. I don't know anyone who's in a church. I don't know a church to even go to. What's the coincidence that today my gas light's on. It's literally on right now. I don't have the money. I'm 
18 years old, I work, go to school, and this truly was a blessing because if this didn't happen, first off, I wouldn't have known about this church, wouldn't have even thought about going to a church again, and then my gas, like, literally this helped me out so much to get to work, to and from work, pay these bills, like, this was truly, truly a blessing. Now, I hope that you were able to hear that. Lindsay's going to tell you that you went home with that girl's phone number, didn't you? I did. So, Michaela and I exchanged phone numbers um, while she, her gas was getting pumped. So, Michaela is an 18-year-old dental assistant student, and she lives with her grandmother here in Gallatin. And um, Michaela helps her grandmother get to doctor's appointments. She helps grandmother pay the bills. Anything she can do to help out, that's what she does. Grandmother is not able to work. So the month, we're halfway through the month. They've paid all their bills. They got food. But she said, I have $10 left to get me through the month. And I have no gas. You heard in her video that her gas light was on. And so she um, called her sister and was going to ask to borrow some money. And her sister said, have you not heard what's going on in your community? I don't think sister lives close. And she said, no, what's going on? And she said, there's a church in Gallatin, the town you live and they're giving away free gas. Like, get there and get your gas tank filled up. And she said, I was just talking with my therapist about finding a church, and I needed community. If I was going to get over the struggles I have, I've got to have a community. And she said, I don't know anyone, like you heard in her video, I don't know anyone at church. I don't know where to start. There are so many churches. Where do I go? And she said, and y'all are here. And she said, I have such bad anxiety. I can't just show up to church. I don't know anyone. I said, well, I'm at the welcome desk every day. Here's my phone number. Text me when you get here. And so about an hour later, I had got my first text from her. And she said, thanks so much for everything today. Ask me the services times. Ask about our midweek times that we had services going on. And then she said, I'm not sure I'm ready yet but I want to come try it out. So I just ask that you guys join me in praying for Michaela this week, that she um, would have the courage to come in here and be loved on by us and that her heart would soften to walk into our doors. Well, it was an incredible morning. And I know, Seth, you were kind of in a different function over there. Well, you know, y'all kind of rotated what you did, but there's where, I, there's where you started. Now, you ended up in a lot of places. Tell us uh, about what the morning meant to you. Yeah, so yesterday, I mean, it was, it was amazing. One of the questions that um, comes to mind when I think about it is, when was the last time you saw God at a gas station? And you may think, whoa, 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 you're crazy. I'm thinking the opposite when I go to the gas station. Um, <laughs> But, but when you think about it for a minute, um, you, you think about God's embrace, his, his hands, his arms around that gas station yesterday, around the community yesterday, around the volunteers. Uh, within that, you think, okay, well, God is it, it, probably pretty warm. And it, and it was warm yesterday. It's the middle of July. That's to be expected. But the other part of that, too, when you think about an embrace from, from God, it's, it's comforting. It's It's healing. Um, it's strengthening and, and it brings about peace. And, and those were some things that I witnessed yesterday. So I was, a, I was a gas pumper and a windshield washer yesterday. I, I asked the question hundreds of times, do you mind if I wash your windshield? And, I, and believe me, nobody turned me down on that question yesterday, <laughs> not a one person. Um, but there was, a, there was a man who pulled up at one point in an older, white, uh, rusty truck uh, he rolled down his window. I said, do you mind if I, if I wash your windshield? He said, sure. Um, his, his face was a bit uh, downcast, downtrodden. I said, how are you doing? And he said, I'm okay. Um, and then he said, I, I, I had a terrible day yesterday. My older brother passed away, and he said that with a, with a tear in his eye. And I said, I'm, I'm so sorry. Uh, I hope today is a better day for you. About that point, um, his lips started turning upward to the sky, and he said, it already is because I'm here. And at that point, I knew that God was at a gas station with us. And it was more than just praying with people, it was more than just giving diapers and wipes and filling up a gas tank and handing out waters and, and Gatorades, all such uh, important things to a group of folks who really, really, truly needed it. But it was more than that. It was being the hands and the feet of Jesus for just a moment. Um, and so I was so honored and, and humbled to just be a, a part of that. 
I wish I'd gotten shots of everyone. I'm really going to go through these very quickly. They're just some of the, the scenes from that day. The first one, I think, is Bruce Krantz, who is uh, pumping gas. And Lindsay, you're there behind him with a wife. And then John Madison, who was washing windshields with uh, uh, Seth there. And then I think Jeff Rydell was pumping gas as well. And then Terry, one of our sweet ladies who comes uh, with us to celebrate recovery. And uh, just uh, blossomed. And Terry was recently diagnosed with cancer as well. So I want you to remember Terry in your prayers. I, I saw that this week. And then we talked a little bit about it yesterday. Uh, Brian Woodson, who was washing windshields, and then Paul Clement uh, as well. Just kind of scenes of what was happening when we were there. Uh, you know, and, and Pastor, you know, when they got to us on the front end, this team down the other end had uh, been doing their magic with them. And uh, Janet, we're going to lead off with you. You're part of the prayer team. In fact, all four of you are. You have some amazing stories. Tell us what the day meant to you. Well, first of all, I must say that it was humbling to be a part of a plan that God had, because there was no doubt in my mind that he orchestrated all of this, and uh, we were just willing servants, obedient to God, and he was all over it, all over it. Um, I had one, I will talk about one, uh, <clears throat> but I had several. There was only one person all day in the four hours that didn't want prayer, and that's okay. We need to respect that. Um, but this one couple came and uh, I asked them how it was going. I said, it's okay, it, it's okay. And uh, I said, well, how can I lift you up to our Lord in prayer? And they said, well, we're okay, but we've got, you know, we've got all these things going on. We've got uh, needs from our, our mother, our sister's family, and uh, we're trying to help them out financially and all, and we just don't have any money left after all of that. So I said, okay, let's lift you up to the Lord in prayer. So we did, and we prayed, and we prayed. And, uh, and then when I finished, there were tears running down their eyes. And uh, the man said to me, he said, do you have a card? <laughs> I thought to myself, hmm, well, some of you all know I do carry cards, but they're scripture cards. And so I said, yeah, I have a card for you. And I gave him this first card that came out, and it was from 1 Peter 5, 7. Cast your anxiety on him because he cares for you. And I gave it to him. And he said, oh, that's exactly what I needed. And I said, this is not Janet. This is God. I didn't just select that one. God selected that for you. And he said, how do I get to your church? What is your church? And I said, well, it's Northfield. I gave him a brochure about it. And... Uh, he said, I said the services are 8, 9 30, 11. And um, I said, but, you know, and he said, well, we might just come. And I said, okay, now you need to be warned. And his face got real sober, and his wife's face got real sober. I said, because if you come, I'm going to look, nobody's looking, you're going to get loved on. <laughs> And he said, that's exactly what we need. And then I looked up, and I saw this man pulling, I didn't say this at the first service, but I'm going to be bold and say it, pulling this cart with a cooler on it with water and everything. And I said, you see that man over there? And they said, yes. And I said, that's our pastor. And they dropped their, they said, you're kidding me. And I said, no. He is the leader of this flock, and he he walks the walk and talks the talk. And they went, Amen. And uh, Jackie, uh, uh, you know, there, there was a point there, and we were, by, by midday, there was sweat. Just, uh, we, didn't look, we didn't look right. I'm just going to tell you, we didn't look right. <laughs> And uh, this lady comes up. She must have gotten out of her car. She comes up. She had gotten some diapers and gotten some wipes. And she comes up to the table. And I think really because maybe of the, the sweat in her eyes, too. Uh, she didn't know where to go when she just looked up. She said, I just need somebody to pray for me. And Jackie heard that. And Jackie turned around. It didn't matter the sweat that was on that lady or the sweat that was on Jackie. She just embraced that lady. And she said, what could I do? What could I do for you today? I went, tell us a little bit about that. 
Her name is Cassie, and she's a wonderful, beautiful woman. Cassie has two children with her yesterday, and I got to meet both of them as they were enjoying those snow cones. And then she had a third one at home, and that was the baby that she needed diapers and wipes for. And she had another one on the way, unplanned, unexpected. And she was stressed, she was overwhelmed, she was overcome, and she is a lost woman. She's a beautiful person. She's carrying a lot of burdens for the family. She's in conflict. She's having very difficult times with her husband and her mother, and she feels completely alone in this world. God brought her up to us at that moment, and she was overcome with tears. Well, I took some moments to get to know her, and then I told her I wanted to make sure she walked away with something that she could hold on to. So I said, here's some real simple words. They're from Matthew 7, 7. And the Lord says, if you ask, you will receive. If you seek, you will find. And if you knock, the door will be answered. And I said, so all you have to do is remember to ask, and he will provide. She's unaware of the Sumner Center. She was unaware of our church and the great things we're doing. She needs food. She needs dental care. They need all types of help, the children as well. I told her about the food box giveaway that's coming up this Saturday, and I told her, I'll be there. Look for me. And there is seek and you will find. I'll be there to help you. Call the church. In between times, you can get help. There's so much to be offered to you. You are not alone. And as we continue to talk about some of the specifics of the trials in her life towards the end, and we had touched, I asked, may I lay hands on you? Can we be together while we pray? We hugged briefly a couple times, but at the end, I gave her the biggest, longest, hardest hug that I could. <laughs> And, and hey, I was a hot, sweaty mess at that point in time. Yeah, no, it wasn't pretty. It really wasn't. And at the end, when we pulled apart, she looked me in the eyes and she said, that's the best hug I've had in a really long time. So I prayed for Cassie last night. I was praying for her this morning, and I will continue to pray for her, and I ask that each of you pray for her as well. And I'm going to be on the lookout for her on Saturday, and I'm going to have something special for her. So. You know, one of the things I love, both you and Janet had a story of a lady that had come up and uh, was expecting a child and really didn't know what, you know, where to turn or where to go. And uh, what I loved is that they had literature that they could give them that said, you can turn here. You can turn to us. Our family's going to love you. We're going we're gonna to do whatever we can for you. And so everybody that came had a next step for them. There was something, some way that they could get in contact with us. And whether it was getting a personal number or whether it was getting a card and praying that they show up. Well, Lisa, I know one time, uh, it was towards the end. I looked back there at you and we were thinking, you know, I'm not sure where we're going to land it. I thought that you were about to end. I thought you were about to expire on us. I looked over there and she was, like Jackie said, a hot mess going on over there. <laughs> And I said, are you okay? And she goes, I'm okay. And uh, so anyway, you're still okay today? Yeah, yes, yes, I, I'm recovering. Jackie and I got to the point where we quit closing our eyes to pray because we were doing this, you know, the swoony thing. So we were like just, you know, we had sunglasses on, so we had our eyes open so that we wouldn't do the swaying thing. And they would wonder, what is this woman going to pass out of my car? <laughs> Uh, amazing day, amazing day. We could give you stories and stories and stories of, of people. Um, I will tell you that God opened the window on Gallatin yesterday and his presence was there. And I will tell you, we were on holy ground. Um, it was amazing. Um, I felt such a need that everyone I prayed with to just tell them. I mean, the people, they, they had paid their bills and they... Um, had to do certain things, put oil in their car, but yet they had no gas, and they look at their bank account, and they've got less than a dollar, and they've got more than a week to go before they get paid again. And it's like, you know, they've got kids, and they've got, you know, wives or fiancés or whoever, and what do they do? Um, so I had a lot of conversations about you know what, God knew your need before you knew your need. He had a plan for your need, and he wants you to know he sees you, and it delights him to meet our needs. Um, it gives him great joy. He has pleasure in doing that because he loves us, and he loves us with a love that can't be measured, is eternal, and we cannot be separated from it in Christ Jesus, and that 
He wants you to know that. He sees you. And uh, that brought a lot of, a lot of tears, um, amazing prayers. I, I prayed with one woman over um, some trauma, tra some big trauma she had suffered as a child in a relationship with her mother, wounds from that, uh, emotional uh, baggage from that. She had young daughters. She did not want to pass that on to her daughters with this generational trauma that is typically how it happens. So we pray deliverance over her. We, we pray, you know, Jesus told us, I'm giving you authority. You cast out demons. You, set, you, set, you heal people. Heal the sick. Set the captives free. So that's what we did yesterday. We did all of that and more. And uh, just, just amazing stories. People sobbing before we even got to the car. Uh, one young lady just sobbing, and, and she couldn't even get out what she needed. And all she could say was, I just need peace. I just need peace. I said, well, you came to the right place because God, he's a God of peace. So just an awesome day. Um, you know, one of the things that, uh, that we didn't tell, or I think like six or seven people ran out of gas in line. And so uh, I saw some of these ladies over here not only praying, but delivering snow cones to cars, delivering in these little jugs we had with paper funnels from the snow cone place, pouring, <laughs> pouring, you know, maybe we didn't need to tell that, uh, uh, <laughs> pouring gas in people's cars. That's how empty people came, that they ran out of gas in line. And Thank you for just what you did. Dan, now you kind of head up this prayer team here, and uh, uh, you were kind of overcome yesterday at the end. Yeah, yesterday, to say, was amazing. I mean, we use words like awesome and amazing a lot, but uh, to say what happened when the window rolled down uh, was nothing short of miraculous. Uh, I can't tell you how many tears were already started when the window came down, and that's even before stories started. And uh, I... The stories, I mean, I just tried to write down a handful, but from, uh, I had an aunt who was in mourning and on her way to a funeral who couldn't get there without it, and, and people who had just moved into the area who were running on empty um, and in more ways than one, and single moms who were just wrestling with kids. Uh, I had lots of people who came in that as soon as the word celebrate recovery came out of my mouth, they were excited and started talking about years of recovery and so excited about our programs. Um, I was excited to have youth that went with me to go pray, and it was amazing to watch them connect with God as God connected with the heart in the car. But I've got to say that the person that I had the story of that was most impacted was me, um, because I'm not sure about you guys, but it's really easy to get comfortable in here sometimes as we kind of sit in here in comfort. It's easy to forget how awesome our God is and what he's doing if we just engage as that salt and light. You know, he says we are salt and light and sometimes we get in the way and I was thankful that he got me out of the way yesterday uh, because there were times after times after times when, when I would just hear this nudge in my heart to tell them how much God loves them. And I would hear the nudge in my heart just to tell them how much an amazing child of God they are. And time after time, we would be met with tears. And, and there were times, I loved it because, you know, we, we, we talk a lot about Northfield Church, but God brought his church there. Uh, we would roll down the window, and in a, a blink of an eye, I would hear in my heart, hey, there's another child on the other side of that window. You're going to have church right now. And, and we would. Right there, the kingdom would step down in the middle of a hot parking lot, and we would pray and have an amazing time. It was, uh, again, when, when you sit here and you kind of sit in our comfortable green room and pray with people as they come, it, it's easy just to sit back. And, uh, and there it was God saying, just let me show you what I want you to really pray for. And as people said, it was time after time. I mean, I, again, I could probably count on both my hands the number of people who said, no, I'm okay, because everybody's just like, bring it on. Um, and that was even before they got a tank full of gas. So a lot of people, myself included, walked away with much more than a, a full tank, but a full heart from the day. We've got just, just a few more pictures, I think, just a few snapshots. I think Alana King and Julia Ray, who were, uh, they only had to flip that for about 10 minutes, and then they had to help do some other things because the line was already too long. Uh, uh, Kelsey and Linda Kittrell at the donation station. Uh, Ken Baton, I think, handing out things to cars on the front end. And then Jen and Hannah Burchard, part of the prayer team with you guys as well. 
And then Pelican's ice cream ran completely out of supplies. There's Richard Samise that was, was greedy but ends up praying at cars uh, before the thing is over just because that need was so prevalent there. And uh, just a couple of really 20 to 30 second videos we're going to show you and set them up. First is a guy named Michael. Michael was just like over the top excited about what was there and just talked about everything. So we videotaped him and I don't even remember what all comes out of his mouth. I called him Mike Laughing Michael. <laughs> This is Michael. Michael, what does today mean to you? Oh, man, it's a great day. It's a blessed day. Is it, does getting a tank of gas help? Yes, sir. Oh. I mean, do, do you, I mean, it, it, it really does. Uh, tell me about, tell me about you, just what you do normally. Well, I'm a member of St. Luke AME Church in yep. Galveston Hill on Bly Street. And we fellowship and every Sunday and everything. I'm in the choir. And, wow. Yeah. Uh -huh. You're a singer. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm well, on hey. I'm a trustee board. It's good to see you yes, today. Sir. Thank you for coming out. Hey, I appreciate it. You want to say hello to our church family? Hey, hey. what's that? Uh, what's the name of that? Northfield. Northfield. You're doing the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank we'll you. We'll see you. Yep. Uh, and the next, the next lady you're going to meet is a lady named uh, uh, Tina. She saw us advertised on Channel 5 that morning. And when she rolled down the window when I first met her, she goes, I call my mama, and I call my daddy, I call my godmama. I call, I've called everybody I know to tell them that they need to get on up here. And uh, the thing that, that grabbed me the most, though, she said, she said, I've got a young child, and I've just, just been struggling with, with what to pay and, and who to pay and what bill to pay next. You don't know what this means. And here's Tina. Story. <laughs> Hey, I am here with Tina. Tina, what does today mean to you? Oh, it means a whole, it's a blessing because you know what? My gas was on E and I'm the only one out of my friends that watch the news. <laughs> and so, you know, I have to call and tell everybody about the stuff, the good news or whatever. But God is so good because me and my son, we've been having some, we've been having some hard times and this is truly a blessing. You just don't know how the struggle is being for us. And I really, really appreciate it. Hey, well, we'll be praying for you, your son, and I see you got some diapers and wipes. I hope it's I all just children. a big blessing day. It is a big blessing day. You just don't know. Hey, you have a good day. Thank we love you. you. The Lord loves you. Thank you so much. Hey, you're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> The next lady is a lady named Brandy. I first met Brandy. She was a mile back in line in the road. And she was going, pray that I don't run out of gas in line. And I said, so we stopped right there, prayed in the window that she not run out of gas. And she didn't. She made it by the, by the grace of the, the, the gas gods out there. She made it. But she told me there, she said, she said, when I got up this morning, I didn't know whether I could get my kids clothes to wear to school. And she had one that was starting school whether I could get gas or whether I could get medication. And she said, she said, when I heard a friend tell me about this, it just, it reminded me that God was in my life. I met her a half a mile later as she's pulling into the trailer park and she's still got a half mile to go to get to the pumps and recorded this little video with her. Here we are with Brandy. Brandy, tell me what today means to you. It's a blessing. I get to get my kids school clothes. I was out wondering how we was gonna get school clothes and this, and this lady told us, and this is a blessing to us. We really appreciate y'all. Oh, so you are having to decide today between how much gas and what to get for your kids? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, well, hey. Yes, sir. This will get me back and forth to work. It's, it's really a blessing. Well, we love you. The Lord loves you. And I hope you have a wonderful day, okay? Thank you, sir. Thank God you, God bless y'all. This last little video clip we're going to show you, uh, at Lindsay actually took this. Uh, I had met this lady kind of walking through, and I guess it's where, where uh, Janet uh, that came in, uh, uh, God just put it on my heart when I got to her. She had no air conditioning in her car. She had been in line for about an hour, and uh, she said, I'm just thirsty. So uh, Alana King was already doing it, so I really took a cue from Alana King and just went and got the other cooler and started going down the the things given to people in line and uh, had no idea that a few minutes later, well, really, maybe 30, 40 minutes later, she would reach Lindsay, and then Lindsay took over from there. I've got Miss Loretta here, and she is going to tell us what a blessing a free tank of gas means to her today. It means a lot. I have a lot of doctor's appointments coming up, and I knew I was going to have enough gas to get to them. So this, I know, is a blessing from God. So Absolutely. he's an awesome God. Yes. Well, we're... 
had the pleasure of washing windshields yesterday. And as I was washing windshields, I was probably talking more than I was washing, but I got to Miss Loretta and her husband and I was talking to them about their day and asking them how they were doing. And we always asked before we just filmed them, I said, can I film you? And he was like, oh, I'm not sure. And Miss Loretta said, well, you can film me. I'm in my pajamas, but you can film me because I have a story to tell. So Miss Loretta is diabetic and um, she has lots of doctor's appointments that she has to get to each week and lots of medicine that she has to buy. And so just this morning, they were trying to figure out what doctor's appointments does she go to or what medication does she buy to get her through this week. And she said, I don't have to do that this week. I have enough gas that I'm going to get to all of my doctor's appointments this week. And I've saved enough money for not having to buy the gas that I'm going to be able to buy all of my medicine for this week. So she was very appreciative. It was an incredible morning. And I think what one of the most fascinating things you know, that just was icing on the cake is that people realized there was no hidden agenda. Uh, somebody even posted on Hip Gallison, there had to be an agenda to which somebody else wrote back and said, no, they wouldn't even take my money. Uh, people tried to give tips at one point and uh, we were like, there's nothing here. And I, I think Lindsay said it best. She looked at a car and she said, you are the gift. You are the gift to us today. It was an incredible moment. Uh, all in all, what was supposed to be two, and a, two hours lasted four and one half hours. Uh, over 40 volunteers, 300 individual vehicles, over 600 Pelican snowballs given away. They ran out of supplies. Over 4,000 gallons of gas, over 1,000 individual diapers, more wipes than anybody could wipe with in a year, and hundreds <laughs> of bottles of water and Gatorade out there, all because of your generosity, because you said yes. So to those of you who volunteered but didn't get a chance this time, we're going to do it again. <laughs> to all of you who were able to volunteer, thank you for staying the journey and going the distance. Uh, to all of you who gave money, who ordered diapers off of Amazon and had them sent in big, you know, boxes here. Wow, what a difference that you made. To our amazing police department, both in Sumner County and in the city of Gallatin, just to be so generous with us and to work with us through what was really a traffic nightmare if you were on Long Hollow Pike yesterday. You were the Sermon on the Mount lived out. You were a taste of God to a world that needed a, a little bit of salt. And you were light to a world that needed a little bit of darkness. You were a city placed on a hill. And I hope that just the story of what God was able to do using each of you and the body coming together was as impactful, if not more powerful, than any words I might have said. We're going to jump in there next week, uh, uh, in, back to the text on the Sermon on the Mount. But I, I hope you go out of here more than anything, uh, uh, just with a, a renewed vision to be salt and to be light to the people that you meet, to give the world a little taste of the goodness of God and to bring a little light into some dark places. It's what Jesus would ask us to do. On your way out, uh, if you have something to give, there are giving boxes there. Don't forget, blood drive, starting point, starting next week. I hope this story has blessed you. Have a great day, and we'll see you next week.